Most people, if given the opportunity, would move through the divorce process quickly and efficiently. And for good reason. Divorce litigation is costly, both in terms of the dollars that are spent on experts and attorney's fees, and also because of the investment of time and the impact a prolonged divorce litigation can have on other family members. The good news is, is that most cases do settle before they get to trial. Uh, they say about 90% of cases will settle. And for the other 10% that don't settle, they'll go to trial uh, in front of a judge. My guest here today is Judge Tina Callahan. She recently retired from the 302nd District Court in Dallas County and has been working with families to help find resolution through the mediation process for the past four years. And she's here today to talk with us about what people need to know when preparing for mediation so that they can get the most out of the mediation process and hopefully move through their divorce efficiently. Tina, thank you so much for being here. You are more than welcome. It is my pleasure. Thanks for having me. Um, I, I'm excited to talk with you about your new role as mediator. Not mm -hmm. that new. You've been doing it for several years now. Yeah. But um, I want to just start off with a question of what is mediation and, and really why should people consider mediation? What benefits does it have for the family? Okay. Mediation is something that family courts have been doing for a long, long time. Um, I think people who are much smarter than me and a lot older figured out a uh, long time ago that in the family divorce arena, it is much better if parties will, will come to agreements about the disputes that they have. I mean, they have to start practicing not being spouses anymore with kids. They have to start practicing being parents with kids. And those are not really the same role. So a long time ago, statutes were put in place where people could resolve their family disputes without going to trial. We call it alternative dispute resolution. Technically, a divorce is a legal dispute. And so mediation is a statutory animal, and it's an alternative way to resolve all the issues that you have in, in your family case without ever having to hear a judge decide it. So why is it better for the family to be the one making the decisions as opposed to a judge? And you were a judge. So, right. so why are you trying to talk people out of going in front of a judge? Well, because I don't want somebody who's known me for six hours and has only heard six hours worth of evidence, which is like this teeny tiny much of my life, my life with my spouse and with my kids, making decisions about the most personal things that we've got our kids, our money, you know, grandma's dresser, our stuff. Those are our most personal possessions. And, and when it's our kids, it's our most prized and coveted things that we have. And uh, 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 while a judge will make the decision after hearing evidence, there's no way that I ever heard enough to make what I considered to be an educated decision. I would make the best decision that I could based on the evidence that I heard, but I just never felt like I gave it justice. You know, I think one of the things that people don't really understand well is the fact that, at least in Texas, where we are, um, you, you're very limited in the amount of time, and we don't get to have three-week-long divorce trials. I mean, it is usually a day, maybe half a day, maybe two days. Um, they're not very long, and we're also limited by the rules of evidence. So people think, oh, well, I'm just going to bring in all of my friends, and everybody's going to talk about what a horrible person he was or she was, and, you know, I'll win the case. And it, it doesn't really work that way. No, it doesn't. And the other thing that Often I would see litigants come in there and, and, and you know, uh, who, moms and dads or husbands and wives, they felt like they had an, an emotional ax to grind. And, and divorces are emotional, obviously. Absolutely. It's your stuff. It's your, it's your life. It's the most intimate thing about you that is ending and something else is going to happen. And oftentimes you don't know what's going to happen. And so there's a lot of fear about, there's a lot of emotions that are roiling around when you go to trial. And, and a lot of people don't realize the judge is not emotionally attached to anything that you're going to be talking about. So you may have a long list of witnesses who are going to come in and say what a bad dude he is and what a you-know-what she is. 
and the judge isn't going to care because the relevance of the evidence is what the judge is going to consider if they let any of something like that in at all. Right, right. So what happens in mediation? I mean, I think let's just start off, first of all, in terms of how, how like the structure of mediation. Sure. What does that look like? Sure. Uh, the way that we typically do it is that attorneys will say, okay, well, we want to come to mediation and these are kind of our issues. So they'll reserve a day. Right. And in this day of COVID, we've often been doing mediations by by Zoom, you know, so we'll do it on a little screen. Uh, more and more now people are doing them in person. But when we were doing them in person, what we would do is we would schedule a day for, let's say it's a husband and a wife and they've got two kids and they the, the husband has filed for divorce. So the husband and his attorney and the wife and her attorney would appear at um, one, either the mediator's office or one of the attorney's offices or a neutral spot where there are offices and the husband and his attorney will go into one room and the wife and her attorney will go into the other room. And I, as the mediator, will go back and forth to negotiate a settlement between the two. So that's logistically how it works out. And so I think it's good for people to know you're not going to be in the same room with your soon-to-be ex-spouse for no. eight, ten hours <laughs> during the day. No. You're going to be in separate rooms. Correct. There are some attorneys that, that depending on what the issues are, they might want to put everybody in the room at the same time. Um, I have never done that um, because it's so emotionally charged. If you do a civil mediation or probate mediation, oftentimes those, when a contract's involved, you can get everybody in the same room, a car wreck, but usually family, no, you're always going to be in separate rooms. Oftentimes they don't even want to see each other coming and going. Right. You know? <laughs> so we have to, timing is everything yeah. when it comes to that. But once, uh, everybody gets there, then I will start usually with the person in this, in my little hypothetical, it's the husband. He's the one that got the ball rolling. I'll go in there and I'll start with them. And what I'm looking for is a proposal, some sort of idea of what it is that you want to get the ball rolling to try to get this thing settled, right? Mm -hmm. And usually what I hear from the husband in this instance, he'll say, okay, well, this is what I want. And they'll give me a list of everything that they want. And then I'll go into the other room and that person will hear what, you know, wife hears what husband wants. And then wife will say to me, oh, well, okay, well, if he wants that, I'm okay with that. But I don't want number two. I want two to look like this. And then so we'll sort of go back and forth like that. So like I tell folks in mediation, I've got husband tells me what he wants. Mm -hmm. Wife tells me what she wants. So this kind of sets the parameters, right? Of where the, right in here is kind of the, the sandbox we're playing in, so to right. speak. And I tell folks, my job is to get everybody from what they want to this, right? This is agreement. This is not agreement. This is what you want, and this is what you can live with. That's it. That's yeah. what you can live with. It's yeah. what you can live with. And as adults, we can live with a lot. But if both, in my hypothetical, if both mom and dad are, are, are negotiating to where they go from what they want to what they can both live with, then they're making decisions that the court would make. They're making decisions that are in the best interest of their children, if they have children. Mm -hmm. And if they have property, they're making decisions how they're going to divide that property in a way that if they can both live with it, then that is what, what the judge would call a just and right division, right? right? And those are the judge's marching orders. So you, as the husband, wife, mom, and dad, in my hypothetical, you guys are doing what the court would do. That is why it is an alternative way to resolve your dispute. And once you get from here to here, I will then draft up an agreement with an, a mediated settlement agreement, which is another statutory animal that everybody has to look at. And, and you have to understand the ramifications of that agreement. And when everybody signs off on it, it's done. Now, you will have to get a final order done by your attorneys, but you will not go to trial. Right. All the issues have been resolved and, and you can start to, you know, turn a corner and go on, move forward. <laughs> Excuse me, the healing 
yes. part can begin. Yes. So I want to talk a little bit about the role of the mediator because sure. you're a former judge. Right. So as a judge, you would call the shots, you would make the decisions. Um, how is that different from your role as a mediator? Oh, I don't call any shots. <laughs> <laughs> My days of making decisions are over, which is not a bad thing. Um, it, the mediator is there to facilitate an agreement between the parties. Now, that doesn't mean I don't use any skills that I've got and probably some that I think of on the fly to try to convince people that maybe this instead of that, or maybe you can give a little here and you can give a little there. But at the end of the day, this is about the, the parties, the people that are, it's their kids, it's their property. They're the ones that are going to make the decisions. If an agreement is reached, it isn't because I said you're going to do it, and it isn't because your lawyer said you're going to do it or not going to do it. It's because you decide, you know what? There's value in resolution. I'm going to go from here to here. And the other party says, you know what? I'm done with this. I'm going to go from here to here. And we're done. They're the ones making the decision. And as a mediator, you have an opportunity to really get to know the people as you sit with them and, and explore different options and brainstorm ideas. Yes. And I'm sure you're hearing in those sessions, like, what's really important to them. Yes. And yes. then you're able to help kind of, you know, maybe expand, we say expand the sandbox a little yes. bit or find some other options yes. and do things that, you know, you wouldn't be able to do if you were a judge. <laughs> there are, uh, oh, I, you know, I used to think when I was a judge, I just wish there was one of those little bubbles above my head so that like people were could see what I was thinking like <laughs> no you don't want to do that or oh that would be a terrible idea sometimes you did have that bubble just okay. Callie and I'm just gonna say okay well maybe I did <laughs> I guess I could get a little overboard um but it is a it as the mediator you do have the opportunity to help people think outside the box mm -hmm. and one of the things that I've had the privilege of being able to to take advantage of is all those years that I spent on the bench is seeing how other people would do things and how they would resolve things and how, how situations came up that I resolved it. And so I have a lot of experience with these sorts of issues, whereas the people that are usually the, the parties that are mediating, it's their first divorce. Right. They've never done anything like this before. They can't think of Oh, well, if this, then that. Or, I mean, they're just so emotionally sometimes in a, in a, you know, in like this, sort of in blinders that they just need someone to help them open, take those blinders off right. or just push them back a little. And then oftentimes it, it, I may make a suggestion. I may say, well, maybe you, maybe you think about something like this and they'll take that, run with it. We take it over to the other side and the other side goes, that's a great idea. Yeah. You know, and so it, I have the ability because of what I've done before, because of my history, what I've done on the bench, and then also I practiced before that, to to help people, you know, more than one way to skin the cat sort of a thing, and then they can run with it. And that's empowering because the parties need to understand it's their lawsuit, it's their mediation, it's their agreement. That's, that's exactly right. And I always know, like, even if a client asks me, well, what do you think I should do? And of course, I am there to advise. Oh. But at the end of the day, it's, it is their decision. And I want them to own that decision because they're the one who's going to have to live with the consequences of that decision. That's right? right. Right. And Jennifer, they don't necessarily have to be okay with it. Mm -hmm. And I've told them that, look, liking it, being okay with it is not living with it. Right. I mean, uh, you know, think about it. There's things I live with. I don't like it. Right. You know, it'll make me happy, but I can live with it. I, I can find a way forward. <laughs> exactly. And if both people are headed in that direction, they're going to make agreements that truly are best for everybody, yeah. their entire family concerned. You know? Right. Because the other option is instead of being the one who's made the decision, you're going to have an, a, somebody else's decision imposed on you. You're going to have a perfect stranger telling you when you're going to see your kids, yeah. who's going to get to decide what school they go to. You know, who gets to take them to the doctor and who's going to get grandma's hutch? Yep. <laughs> Perfect stranger. That's exactly right. Yeah. Um, I want to talk about preparing for mediation. So what do you see in terms of preparation? Like what, 
you know, what can people do ahead of mediation to really get themselves in the right mindset, to really feel prepared coming into mediation? Right. Uh, uh, first thing, if you've got an attorney, I would insist that you just contact your attorney because you're, you're going to know about mediation way ahead of time. Mine were scheduled one month, two months, three months right. ahead of time. So you're going to know it's coming up. Uh, and attorneys are busy people. Yeah. And uh, attorneys know mediation. You know, att these attorneys could do a mediation half asleep. You know, they've just done so many. You don't know about mediation. This is probably your first one. And so I would make sure I contacted my attorney and insisted on spending, even if it's just a half hour, getting uh, having a conversation with your attorney about what, if anything, they need from you, uh, what the process will be like. Uh, talking about proposals, initial offers, that sort of thing, so that you have some idea of what you're going to be walking into on that particular day. As far as things to have ready, if you're if you uh, if it's a marriage and you're actually getting divorced, and so you're you're going to have to divide up property, it's always a really good idea to have an idea of a list of your property. What is the extent of your property? Yeah. You know, maybe your attorney's got that list and that's great, but you need to make sure you review it, make sure you haven't left anything out. And also uh, financial accounts. Mm -hmm. Whenever we divide financial accounts, a big deal always becomes, well, I knew there was, you know, $500 in that account three months ago, but it's three months later and we're in mediation. How much money's in, its in it now? So yeah. it's always a real good idea to have access to documents that show what you've got today, today <laughs> or as close to today as yeah. possible, yeah. you know, that kind of thing. So you should always do that. I think that's very helpful. It would help your attorney. And it's also going to help you. It gives you something to do, keeps you busy as you're working, you know, headed towards the mediation. And then it it's also saves time during the mediation because what you don't want to do, and this does happen more often than I wish it would, um, is this question will come up? Oh, well, there was $15,000 in that account a month ago. And now you're saying there's two. What happened? Well, it, all I need is a bank statement. You right. know, well, where's the bank statement? Oh, well, I don't have it. Well, where is it? Can you get it on your phone? Can you call the bank? And what you're doing is you're spending time during the mediation when you should be negotiating, gathering paperwork that it would be m much more beneficial and actually more cost effective if you had that right away. Exactly. At your fingertips. <laughs> yeah. Um, and I think people are often surprised at how long mediation does take. So I know um, a lot of people think, well, I mean, why do we need a full day where we already have agreement on all these issues and let's just do a half a day. And very rarely do I ever see something settle in half a day, right? It really does take time. And part of that time is because there's probably some missing information. There is missing information. And also, here's the other thing that I have found, is that um, a, most of my successful mediations start out with some of the emotionality coming out because when you look at it, this is your day in court. Yeah. This is the day that you're going to talk to someone who isn't the judge, but but if you were in court, it would be the judge about you know how you've been done wrong and or how things bad things have been or what has gone on or why you are why you've ended up where you are sitting in the chair opposite a mediator on that right. day. What's gone on? Well, you know, oftentimes that's there's a, a a little a little bit of time that I I really do want folks to kind of decompress mm -hmm. and get that out because once you can at least l let some, you know, just let a little bit of that emotionality out, then I see people sort of get calmer mm -hmm. and they're not as nervous and they can think more clearly and help me come up with creative ideas to help them. And so that just takes a while. It does, it, right. You're moving from the, the, I guess I'm not a, a neuroscientist, but that part of your brain, the primitive part, the fight or flight, 
People often feel fear coming into mediation. It's a normal part of that. And so to kind of let go of that and to be able to move into your creative problem solving brain. Oh, yeah. Is a, is a good thing. Yeah. I, I that, you know, I don't know either, but that's what I see. Yeah. You know, that when anecdotally, that's the how I see that process play out. And interestingly enough, once they get that, the ones that are able to get it out, then we start working on solutions. And before you know it, I've got folks that have gone from here to here. Right. You know, and and sometimes it takes six hours, sometimes it takes ten. But but I interestingly, people that go longer than your full day, eight hour typical mediation, they want to mm -hmm. because they see the momentum and they can see they see they're getting near the finish line and they start feeling good about the resolution. They 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 understand that there is value. In that resolution. You know, it's, it's interesting because what I usually see happen is that the, the, the switch happens where you can begin to see your life after divorce and it's a good life because now you actually have numbers, you actually have a schedule, you actually, some of those pieces are filled in. And as the day progresses and you get closer to the finish line, you actually begin to see, oh my gosh, this, I'm going to be okay. That's right. And That's it's a right. beautiful thing. Yes. Well, there is a, there is a fear of the unknown. And let's face it, life after marriage or after a divorce, it's an unknown. Now, some people have a known, you know, there's paramours and there, you know, <laughs> some people have already, they moved on years ago, you know, right. uh, but there are others that have not and, and they will stay stuck in where they are because they can't move forward. They're so afraid. And if you can spend a little time talking about that, Mm -hmm. And letting them express it and then talking with them about alternatives and just kind of opening things up for them, even if it's a little, Jennifer, even if it's just a little mm -hmm. bit, they can see that light, like what you're talking yeah. about. And, and, and then they can help themselves better. So it, it, I agree with you wholeheartedly. I do. Now, obviously, people do get stuck. I mean, not every case settles, although most no. do. So the odds are good that your case will be settled. But... What, um, what are sort of the leading reasons, aside from what we've just talked about, but when you see people get stuck, what, what is happening? And, and maybe what do you do to help them unstuck themselves? Well, there, it, part of it is that there, there is a fear. They're, mm -hmm. they're fearful. Uh, they're angry. Uh, and, and the ones that are probably never going to settle are ones where the folks are so... They're so caught up in their own conflict that they cannot let it go. Um, now, oftentimes there are other issues in the marriage that they bring into the mediation that are going to um, affect it. Domestic violence issues of abuse issues, um, uh, substance abuse issues, um, their mental health issues, uh, even physical health issues. These are overarching any mediation that I do. And so you have to be sensitive to how those facts, which they are facts, will affect the people in the mediation. And um, sometimes you can work with them. Sometimes it might take more than one yeah. mediation session. I mean, I've... Uh, cases where the conflict was very, very high, um, I have found success in doing two or three day mediations. Right, right. You know, and everybody has agreed. Yeah. You know, usually in that respect, oftentimes the folks that are, it's their mediation, they're like, well, no, we don't go to court. We're, we will figure out how this is going to end, but, but it, we both agree it will not be in court. Uh, and then there are, are times where there are some that will say, it's my way or the highway, and the judge will see it my way, and you will take the highway. And those, we call, we call, <laughs> we call that an impasse. <laughs> <laughs> right. And that's well, never going to happen. No, no. And I, I mean, I, I imagine, you know, sort of being able to have some flexible thinking, right? To know. To, yes. I think people can get really entrenched in their stories. They can get really entrenched in their positions. And when people are entrenched, then that's it's going to be harder to move. But yeah. if they're willing to just, you know, let go a little bit and mm -hmm. wiggle a little bit, you know, they can, 
make make a little headway. Right, and and I will say mm -hmm. this, that I um, usually I don't know until hour five, six, seven. I mean, way on into the mediation that this um, that I'm not going to be able to get these folks there because Jennifer. Everybody starts out entrenched. Yeah. They start out, I want this, I want this. They start out apart, you know? Yeah. If they weren't um, entrenched, they would settle it with their lawyers. That's true. You know? So they all start out that way. It's just how entrenched are they? And um, most lawyers will send the mediator, uh, I ask for just a little confidential statement so that I can have a little bit of history, a little mm -hmm. bit of, you know, what's going on with the parties. If there's anything that perhaps uh, I need to know about that the attorneys are, that they, I cannot let the other side know, or um, if there's something about their client that they want me to know. I think it's real important that your viewers know that mediation is a confidential process. That's the other thing about it that makes it so cool. Because I can go in one room and hear all kinds of stuff. Mm -hmm. And unless you say it's okay for me to tell anybody in there, I can't tell. Yeah. You know? So there's things that I'll know that you've told me that they don't know that I wish they knew, but I cannot let them know. Now, does that mean I can't read a room? Oh, I can read a room. And I can tell this person over here, oh, uh, you know, I will never be able to sell that in that room. You're going to have to come off that. I just know it. I'm just telling you right now, I'm not selling that in that room because I know what's going on in the other room. Right. Without telling them what's going on. Right. Right. So you can feel comfortable in talking to the mediator about anything you wish. And I think that's one of the things about mediation that allows people to, when they're entrenched, to loosen up. Right. Yeah. Exactly. I mean, to be heard yes. and, you know, to have the experience validated at some level. Uh, but then, you know, yeah, I, I've, I see it happen all the time too, where then, okay, now, now we can begin to move. Yeah. And I mean, it's, it's, it's a beautiful thing. Holding on to those positions um, is is a hard place to be. Well, I mean, it is. It is. And 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 the the other thing I know about I think I think one of the reasons attorneys like to go to mediation I always did was that once we got into mediation that mediation the mediator would start th saying things to my client that I'd been saying for six months and he or she had just quit listening to me, you know, right. and then it would come out of the mediator's mouth and I'd look at my client and the mediator and they, my client would be like, gulp. Oh, okay. Maybe I should, <laughs> you know, it kind of helps the attorney too. Yeah. Cause sometimes I'll say something and I can see the attorney going, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, you know, when you're, when you're in that attorney client relationship, there's a, a lot, a, a lot that's shared, a lot that gets discussed, but a lot of the same things are rehashed. And so it can be really helpful just to have another set of eyes and ears. And, and oh, it makes the all the yeah. difference, I think. Yeah, absolutely. Um, okay, are there times when people shouldn't go to mediation? Uh, you know, probably. Uh, the way that we're doing them now, especially over Zoom, mm -hmm. um, the, my biggest concern about not going to mediation is whenever the power dynamic is so skewed. And most of the time, for purposes of family cases, that's whenever there's a domestic violence issue. And, and so we can go to mediation uh, if there's been domestic violence, you don't have to. Right. And, and the law says you, don't, if, you do not have to, and the court can't make you, okay? Um, but especially now when there's Zoom, and you don't even have to get in the same building with the person. You don't even have to see them. Right. You know, uh, and they can't see you. Um, it could be helpful because the only person that's dealing with the alleged abuser or abuser is me. Right. Uh, it's me, not your attorney, not you. It's me. Right. And um, I can see if I can facilitate something to get an agreement going. I have done that. Mm -hmm. I have mediated domestic violence once, but um, I've never, I mean, never say never. You know? I, I feel the same way because one of the things that we know for sure is that, I mean, litigation can create, the stakes can get a lot higher. <clears throat> and so when you have people who have a propensity for violence, I mean, people that can make people more violent. 
And so it's not like going to court is a safer place to be. And if so, if you, you know, you can explore it. Obviously, if somebody's so unreasonable and you just can't, you know, negotiate with them, then it's not it's not going to be fruitful. But yeah, yeah, but worth a try. I mean, yeah. Well, and do understand. I think I, now I don't know in other counties, but I do know in Dallas County, when I was sitting on the bench, and also I, I see it a lot now. Uh, judges will they'll say take that issue to mediation. Yeah. And it may be, you know, this the the pivotal issue. It's it's the thing that I want to move to Montana and and you know relocation, which is a big deal. And and so, mom is saying I want to move, and dad is going, no, I, I'll never be able to see my kids again. I, it's in Montana. You know, I make sixteen dollars an hour. I can't. No, I I can't do that. I love my kids. I, and so. A judge will say mediate it. Well, okay, really? <laughs> but I did the same thing. Yeah. You never know. That's why I do four-hour mediations. Either it's a limited issue, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. uh, or your uh, judge told you and you're checking off a box. Right. You know? <laughs> and you never know. Oftentimes we can make chicken salad out of this thing and, and we can come to an agreement on something else. like. Right. But that issue, it, no, it's they're they're going to have to take that down to the judge. Some of them, you just got to tell somebody sitting four feet higher than you in black dress. <laughs> they got to tell you how it's going to be. Sometimes that's just that's life. It is. It that's is, life. and that's and that's why we have judges, and it's an important part of our Very. legal system. And so, not everything is going to settle, but yeah. certainly worth a shot. And I think so. Even where. Even where you think it would never happen, I tend, man, if I had a dollar for everybody who starts a media, mediation, I was saying, oh, they're never going to settle. And then we settle. You know, I, I, I wouldn't be super rich, but. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Well, as we come to the close of our time together, <clears throat> what, what message of hope do you have for somebody who maybe is facing divorce um, and, you know, considering mediation? What? What message of hope would you like to leave them with? Divorce is change, and that's all it is. And if there's anything we can count on, it's going to be change. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't change who you are. It changes your circumstances. It, but it doesn't change who you are inside. It doesn't change relationships. It ha doesn't have the power to do that unless you let it. Mm -hmm. And we get so caught up in our emotions you know, and they're just feelings, we're going to all be okay. You know, you just need to take a deep breath. And the lovely thing about how, what I've done and, 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 and how long I've been doing things is I've had, I've had former clients come back to tell me how much happier they are. Mm -hmm. um, and I've had people that uh, I've made decisions about on the bench who have come back and said, we never thought it would work, but it did. And you got this right. <laughs> the ones who did, I didn't get it right. They don't tell me. But <laughs> but I've heard that you got it right. And with mediation, uh, people thank me when it's over yeah. with, when they've gotten resolution, because they're so relieved that they're turning a corner and that someone cared enough to help them do that. Right? And that's what we're here to do. We care enough. We're going to help you do that. You find yourself in... Not the best of circumstances, but they're just circumstances, and they're going to change. I love it. Yeah. That's that's great. Thank you so much. You are for welcome. The work you're doing to help our families and for oh. taking time to be here today to talk about mediation. Well, thank you so much for having me. It was my pleasure. <laughs> if you want to learn more about divorce and about the options available, of course, we would love it if you would subscribe to our channel and tune in for additional episodes. We're also going to include a link to Judge Callahan's mediation website so you can learn more about her services and how to prepare for your mediation. Thank you.